Now let's consider a simple problem like a bubble sort. Now first I have written a function to print the elements of an array which I will be using it to print from here and then okay, I have a bubble sort. Okay, Now this program looks fine. The first one we require a for loop for the number of passes then we require a for loop for the number of comparisons then we compare the consecutive elements and if the elements are not in order then we have to swap them right now this is the array which i've created i'll be passing the array and the number of elements to this and this is going to sort it once things are sorted i'd like to print this now i'd like to save this and then run this particular program and observe there is any errors or not the file name is called as bubble sort so i'm just going to compile it there's no problem i'd like to run this particular program now as soon as i run the program you can just observe that there's some problem here it did give me okay some garbage value at the beginning that's okay one thing and then the other element seems to be almost fine but there is some kind of error what occurred so we don't know what this problem is remember this is not a compilation problem this is a runtime problem this is not a compilation problem this is a runtime problem okay now how do i identify what could be the reason for this particular error one way is you can debug the program using debugging tools like a gdb or if you're working with an ides you can do step by step and along with that you can use the watch windows and try to understand what is happening now if you are not aware of gdb or working with an ide how do we use the watch windows and all the simplest form is basically to print so i'd like to okay uh, first understand how this code should work and then we can check out okay is this work code working or fine we'll just take this input we'll try to analyze how this should have worked so let me just take this line out here now in our normal case the bubble sort first we compare 12 and 45 this is the first comparison the first and second element right if they're not in order meaning if the first element is greater than compared to second we interchange them otherwise we don't interchange the first element remains as it is now we compare the second and third element now they're not in order so we need to swap this 32 comes here and then 45 moves to the third position now we compare this 45 with 12 and then 12 comes here and then 45 comes here the same way we're going to again compare 45 with 65 now 45 is lesser so we just move ahead 65 with 34 then 34 moves out here and then 65 moves to the next position then again we compare 65 with 2 2 moves here and then 65 then 65 with 6 then 6 and 65 now this is what the code okay the element should be after the first pass so how many comparisons we did first we did a comparison between 12 and 45 there was no swapping second we did a comparison between 45 and 32 yes there was a swapping third time we did a comparison between 45 and 12 remember in this particular case okay 32 and 45 was swapped okay so third element was 45 and the fourth element is 12 now again this will be swapped so you're going to compare 45 with 65 there is no swapping happening here the next time we take 65 with 34 there will be swapping then again there will be like 65 and 2 because 65 and 34 is swapped now again there will be swapping now 65 with 6 right these are the number of comparisons what we need to do 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 how many elements are there here 8 if there are 8 elements we need to perform 7 comparisons so I'd like to observe okay is it really performing the same way or in a different way so let's go back to the code here I'd like to place what two elements I'm comparing so I'd like to just print a message telling that comparing percentage d and percentage d the two elements array of j and array of j plus one right and then i'd like to just give a get care um might be after every comparison i'd like to give a get care so that you can understand it is working fine or not just to make sure that we press an enter key after every comparison so we have this information out here and we'll try to run this particular code so i've saved this code right will you keep this active we'll come to this place we'll try to compile this again there is no problem 
I'll try to run this. First time 12 and 45, perfect. Second time 45 and 32, fine. 45, 12, again fine. 45, 65, fine. 65, 34, again perfectly fine, no problems. 65 and 2, 65 and 6. Now first pass should have been completed. Now we should go to second pass. But what happened here? We are comparing 65 with some other value. So there is some extra comparison which is happening. There is an extra comparison which is happening here. So we are taking a 65 and we are crossing the boundary. So there is an extra comparison, right? So if you want to reduce the number of comparisons, remember there should be n minus one number of comparisons. Okay, but we are actually ending up doing n comparisons because i value is zero in the first iteration here. So n minus zero is again n. So j is again starting with zero. J less than n will totally perform n comparisons and not n minus one. So if you want to perform n minus one, either you can write minus one here or we can start i with one. So now when you just do this and I'd like to also print a message telling that after percentage d pass right this is my values print array i'd like to do this fine and then there's no print new line there i'll try to print a new line here so i'd like to save this again keep this data active here i'd like to terminate this code i'd like to recompile and then i'd like to re-execute one, two, you can just observe this. Perfect. No extra things. Again, going back with 12 and 32, 32 and 12. So we identify there is some problem, which we rectified it. Now, this information, what we added here and here, it is not required once the program is working fine. So I want to disable the code. So if you want to disable the code, what we do it is we generally write uh, a comment. We just make it a comment, right? But comment, writing it as comment is not the correct practice. Instead, we have to disable the code. In order to disable the code, what you do it is we basically write hash if. We can write a macro name. We can just write defined followed by you want to debug information here. Then only if the macro def okay is defined, I would like to do this. Otherwise not. The same way, I'd like to write hash if defined of debug. Only then do this and end if, right? So we'll just go back here. We'll try to compile this program. Now, I'm not using this hyphen D option. This is my sorted elements. But if I use hyphen D debug, right? You can just see uh, when I run this one, okay. After the first pass, again, now the second pass starts. This is my second pass, this is my third pass, right? So you can just do this. Okay, so this way, or if you don't want to press the enter key after every statement, you can just do this, save it. Right, after every pass, it's printing the elements. After every pass, after the first pass, after the second pass, in the first pass, you can just see there were seven comparisons, right? And second pass, they'll be uh, reducing after. Okay, you can just see out here. The initially here there were seven comparisons. Here there are six comparisons. Then there'll be five comparisons. Then four comparisons. Then three comparisons. Then two comparisons. And finally there'll be only one comparison. And it is my sorted list, right? So okay, if you don't want to debugging information, just don't give the option. Run this. Now, this particular statement can also be written in another way. We can just write hash if def and we can specify the macro name. This is same as hash if defined. This one and this one, they mean the same thing. So you can just run once more. Right. Fine. Or if you want to uh, use some other name, like for example, I'd like to say pass here. And this is for comparison. Okay, let me just keep it as debug itself there. So if you want, you can define multiple things. You want hyphen D debug. 
or okay you don't want to use debug you only, only want to use pass so it's going to print the elements after every pass but not comparing every element so you can have multiple macros which you can define it okay and uh, there is an alternative for this called as if not defined now this one the condition becomes true if this macro is not defined right okay now we're going to stop here uh, in this session in the next session we'll be learning how we're going to apply the same concept in order to restrict multiple file inclusion here we're going to stop thank you